pressure increased and it produced a very high magnetic pressure leading to explosions. Uh, this was confirmed by many two-dimensional and three-dimensional uh, calculations. Uh, here as an example, you see the uh, plot of energies. Uh, this is energy of uh, explosion, which, which is, uh, uh, reaches 5, 10 to 50 ergs, but uh, it can be also easily increased several times for different boundary conditions. Uh, the magnetorotational instability is very important here because it shortened very strongly the time of development of uh, explosion, increasing exponentially the magnetic fields, poloidal and toroidal. And this is a, a numerical picture show the development of, of this instability, which is schematically uh, shown here. So you have a vortexes. This vortexes increase magnetic field poloidal, then uh, it is also increased by twisting, and, and so the, this self-accelerating process leads to exponential growth of magnetic field. So here, here the uh, diagram showing the distribution of pulsars. Uh, this is the main uh, single pulsars. This is recycled pulsars with very low magnetic field, and we have several uh, uh, very high magnetic field pulsars also which are not, don't show any traces of explosions. Uh, gamma ray bursts were mm, discovered, mm, uh, first publication in 73, uh, and there are many, many models appeared, more than 100 models, mainly connected with, with galactic origin of magnetic, uh, of, of the burst, accretion, uh, explosions, uh, and, and so on. And, uh, here in this paper, uh, we have summarized several models, including uh, the model where gamma ray bursts were connected with supernova explosion due to neutrino flux is uh, transforming into gamma, ray, into gamma uh, radiation. What is actually uh, now considered uh, as a central engine? Uh, so there are, after, uh, discovery of afterglow and uh, discovery of the high redshift uh, events, the, the, the main models of galactic origin were uh, forgotten and several other very highly, rather uh, unusual models have been uh, suggested. Uh, first is hypernova, which is uh, very, uh, very expensive. Uh, powerful supernova, explosion of helium star and so. Then uh, Usov in 92, before uh, finding, he, he was the person who, together with Prelutsky, suggested that in the early, early time, suggested that uh, gamma ray bursts are a cosmological origin, connected with, with the uh, nucleus of uh, Mm, uh, uh, active galactic nucleus. Uh, and so he suggested a newborn pulsar, which is very rapid in high magnetic field, and it loses its energy by dipole radiation very quickly and produces a very strong flux of energy giving a burst. And, and uh, this uh, model uh, related to Woosley and uh, co authors, which considered uh, a formation of a black hole, massive, massive black hole surrounded by magnetized accretion disk, and gamma ray bursts are connected with these processes uh, inside this disk and falling of the disk into, into a black hole. And this model uh, is not now the most popular. And the calculations of this model mm, rather, mm, I think, more uh, extended have been done by Bar Barkov and Komisarov. This is how uh, uh, it happens. This is a Christian disk. Here is black hole. And uh, in the process of differential rotation, magnetic field is increasing and giving uh, a start to, to this collimated jet, which is usually connected with the uh, gamma ray burst. Because uh, if it's not collimated, then it should have an enormous energy, which is absolutely impossible to imagine, uh, energy exceeding uh, uh, mass, mass, uh, rest mass energy of the sun or, or any other star. 
several times. So in order to have less energy output, the gamma ray burst should be definitely collimated. Uh, also, there are se uh, several two more exotic models. It's a uh, uh, magnetized disk together with blend ferginite mechanism. Uh, it's uh, slightly uh, something intersect with Woosley mechanism. And uh, vacuum explosion of strongly charged, uh, electrically charged black hole. It's a uh, so-called diadosphere explosion, which is su uh, suggested by Ruffini. And, uh, but uh, the main problem here is how to form such a highly charged, uh, highly charged uh, black hole. So among uh, about uh, 4,000 gamma ray bursts, now it's maybe more, it's about several years ago, uh, maybe 10,000. Uh, and these gamma ray bursts are divided in, into, two, uh, into two groups. Uh, uh, short gamma ray burst and long gamma ray burst. And maybe uh, they, are, they have different origin. At least part of these short gamma ray bursts are definitely connected with, with uh, uh, quite another uh, object, soft gamma repeaters, giant bursts from soft gamma repeaters. They have very high redshift, uh, up to nine. Uh, th this is uh, uh, eight, it's, it's maybe uh, old, but now it's up to nine. Uh, and uh, as I told you, origin may be different. Uh, what is interesting uh, is to look at the dependence of the maximum, uh, maximum uh, spectra in the gamma ray burst as a function of redshift. Uh, as, was, as we heard from previous talk, this maximum uh, corresponds to 200, 400 uh, kV. So it means that if gamma ray burst is at 9, Z9, that it should move to 20, 40. But I, I don't know, was, was this statistical analysis done or not? So the afterglows, uh, the afterglows uh, uh, are connected with different reg uh, uh, reasons. Uh, the uh, most popular is the fireball, which is uh, formed by the shock in the surrounding me uh, medium. And uh, uh, this surrounding medium uh, defines the, the light curve uh, together with the uh, with, with the collimation angle. But there is another source of uh, afterglows. It's uh, mm, afterglows from the heated gas because the gamma, if you consider only the gamma ray uh, flux, then if it's surrounded by the uh, dense enough uh, like molecular cloud, then the heating of this uh, cloud and subsequent uh, cooling uh, will uh, give you also uh, some kind of uh, optical and ultraviolet afterglow. And it was, we first have calculated this uh, for one dimensional spherical symmetrical case uh, uh, in uh, 97. And uh, later in two dimensional model with, uh, with Barkov, uh, where we considered different kinds of uh, structure of this cloud, non-symmetrical. And uh, with different uh, structures, you can find a very uh, uh, different uh, kind of uh, light curves of in duration and, and in form. And here is the, there is a movie which is not working. Maybe uh, later i show. And uh, also what is interesting, uh, uh, this rare radiation of, uh, 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 in this molecular cloud, if it's very dusty, if it's dusty, can uh, lead to formation of the infrared afterglow uh, without any uh, optics. This was uh, observed in, in this gamma ray burst where only infrared uh, afterglow was uh, uh, existed without optical afterglow. And we explained it by rare radiation of this uh, uh, cold molecular cloud and gamma ray burst is uh, slightly heating this, uh, this cloud uh, but not evaporating dust. In, in this regime, you will have a, a infrared light curve without optics. Uh, most interesting uh, for the origin of the uh, gamma ray burst is a prompt optical emission. Because uh, what uh, we see in the uh, larger times is connected with surroundings. But the prompt optical emission is, uh, should uh, t tell us something about the nature of the central engine. So the first uh, prompt emission was uh, found here. 
uh, in this uh, 99, uh, and it, it started after about 100 seconds. Uh, and uh, this light curve was very important, but, uh, but it has very small number of points. Uh, it's not uh, shown here, but there are only uh, three points. So we can uh, put only triangle uh, for this uh, gamma ray burst. And what, what, what was clear is that uh, the, uh, the luminosity drops very quickly in the prompt emission. The, the most important data about prompt emission was obtained uh, in this uh, system called uh, Tortora. It's camera, uh, which was origina originally uh, installed in uh, a Caucasus Mountain, a special astronomical observatory, uh, with very wide field of view, very wide field of view. Uh, you see uh, 60, six, uh, 600 square, uh, square degrees. Uh, with good time resolution, 0.1, and uh, not very high limiting value, but it, it, it seems to occurs to be enough. And it, uh, the second, uh, the second uh, uh, example, uh, such installation was done in uh, uh, Chile, on the together with the Italian uh, Italian telescope REM, which is also was supposed to observe. Gamma ray burst. And due to very wide field of view, uh, the gamma ray burst, well, uh, later you, you will see it. The, this gamma ray burst was uh, observed not only uh, immediate, not only, not after Galileo, but was the whole light curve uh, before the beginning of the burst was also uh, visible. And it leads to uh, very important discovery showing that the prompt emission and afterglow has absolutely different origin. You can see it. Uh, this is this is the optical light curve. This optical light curve, n not, uh, and it's called naked eye uh, uh, gamma ray burst because you see, it's a brighter than six magnitude, <clears throat> and you see that this light curve repeat almost exactly the uh, gamma ray burst light curve. And last, it lasts about uh, 60 seconds. And then it drops very strongly down. Uh, you, you see it's after 60 seconds, it drops down up to 13. And uh, after 1,000 uh, seconds, it's practically only for larger telescopes. So uh, the prompt optical. Uh, the prompt optical emission is very strongly correlated with gamma. What it means? It means that the surroundings uh, are not important, that uh, it's transparent for, for, for the uh, optical radiation, because you see a uh, light curve in optics almost exactly uh, repeating the gamma ray burst. Therefore, what happens later in these afterglows, uh, it's a question because uh, you need uh, a lot of matter to, to, to see it. And, uh, it makes uh, problems for this uh, canonical model. And unfortunately, there is a counterexample of one that is clearly not correlated. So no, I speak about this particular model, about this particular event. I, I, I'm not uh, speaking about uh, okay. in general. Okay. Uh, so uh, what else is important is that the afterglows, if there is a collimation, uh, resemble, uh, the, the exact uh, comparison with gamma ray burst shows that this prompt optical emission should be collimated in the same way as, as gamma radiation. And that means that uh, the naked uh, uh, gamma ray burst optical events, estimation of number of these naked uh, uh, events decreases strongly, so it's not surprising that we have not seen any naked uh, afterglows because they are much less, um, much less luminous. Uh, uh, only the uh, later afterglows can be uh, non-collimated. 
so uh, that's what, uh, what uh, all what I wanted to say about uh, gamma ray bursts. Now I want to uh, uh, attract your attention to soft repeaters. Uh, soft repeaters uh, initially were discovered by Mazet's uh, group uh, as, as, a as, as a normal gamma ray burst from uh, region, from direction from uh, large Magellanic clouds, and initially it was supposed that it's just contamination. But uh, after some years, after maybe tens of years, uh, people start to believe that it's really exist in, in this uh, large Magellanic cloud, and since then, uh, Mazets first and then later um, Batsi um, people uh, discovered uh, about 10 or now they increased the number of these gamma ray bursts. What is characteristic of the, uh, uh, um, and they, they were divided into, into separate, uh, separate uh, uh, division because they were, rep they were recurrent. All gamma ray bursts are single events, but these were recurrent. So, it was definitely objects which produces these events. Uh, and uh, after, EP, after the uh, uh, discovery of, of period, which was first discovered in this large Magellanic cloud, uh, all the, uh, most of the uh, soft repeaters have periods between five and eight seconds. Uh, so they are very slowly rotating uh, gamma ray bursts, uh, slowly rotating neutron stars. And, uh, the energy, rotational energy, was definitely not enough to produce such a, such a strong explosion. When uh, P-dot was measured and P-dot was uh, connected with uh, rotational energy losses, which, which are not uh, really uh, uh, c correct, it's not, not correct when you uh, consider source, which is very strong, and uh, only small part you connect with the uh, losses of, angle, of um, angular momentum. But nevertheless, the magnetic field uh, there was about 10, 14, 10, 15 Gauss, and these objects were called magnetars. We see now that uh, this concept of magnetars is, is very uh, uh, faint. So it's, I think it's, it's, it's slowly dying because uh, there are many observational results uh, showing that uh, this activity is not connected with strong magnetic field from one side. From another side, there are many, several uh, radio pulses with such uh, high magnetic fields. And third is that pure theoretical reason. If you have very strong magnetic field, then uh, uh, in order to uh, annihilate magnetic field, you need move it like in the sun. You, uh, co convection uh, approaches to uh, magnetic field lines and they uh, annihilate. But uh, in this case, magnetic field forces are much larger than any other, other forces. So even star quake uh, uh, is not clear how, how, what to do it. Uh, what is characteristic to these uh, soft repeaters is they, uh, each of them has a, one giant burst where they are luminosity increased uh, uh, many orders of magnitude. And due to this, we can um, expect that short gamma ray bursts, uh, which are observed, some, at least some of them, are just uh, giant bursts from these soft repeaters situated in the nearest uh, galaxies. Uh, this was suggested in 1999 in, in my paper and the paper of Mazets and, and uh, all others, uh, several of uh, his collaborators. In Mazet's group were discovered two, at, at least two short gamma ray bursts, which may be, uh, or the, uh, for Andromeda is probably uh, very uh, certain that they are connected with giant bursts of gamma ray, uh, soft gamma repeaters. With energy uh, of the same order as energy of uh, estimated for galactic events. Here, uh, I, I show the example of pulsars with very high magnetic field. This is 4, 10 to 13. This is uh, even larger, about 10 to, to 14 Gauss. Uh, this is uh, also, you see two radio pulses with magnetic fields 
with magnetar fields. It means that uh, this is radio pulsar, but not magnetars. And uh, uh, also we have, you have uh, periods in these radio pulsars of the same order as magnetar periods. For example, this period, uh, 8.5 seconds. It's a pure normal radio pulsar without any explosions uh, with a period 2.8 second, uh, sorry, uh, a period 8.5 second and which has no no uh, explosions, just radio emission and, and that's all, like normal pulsar. So this is, uh, it was uh, suggested that uh, you have a limiting period and after which pulsar are dying, but uh, discovery of this pulsar leads to this uh, title of, this pa of the paper of uh, Manchester and all. So uh, soft gamma repeaters, uh, I, I uh, list here several mo most uh, famous soft repeaters and the most, uh, the recent discoveries show that uh, the low that uh, low that uh, magnet that uh, soft repeater should have very high magnetic field even estimated not correctly is violated in this pulsar so you see that in this in this uh, particular soft repeater uh, which is also just pulsar with the period uh, i don't know no, about 5 7 seconds not not, not important uh, magnetic field doesn't exceed 7, 10 to 12 Gauss. Means it has low, very low magnetic field for, for the magnets. No uh, normal pulsar magnetic field. Therefore, uh, these are light curves of the pulsar. Uh, uh, therefore, the connection of pulsars, uh, of soft repeaters with uh, uh, magnetars is even shaking even stronger. Uh, this is one of the most uh, striking uh, observations uh, of soft repeaters which permit to find out its absolute, its absolute luminosity. Uh, soft repeaters giant bursts are so strong that all, uh, all uh, detectors are saturated and nobody observed the maximum. And so nobody knows how high is this maximum. This is the first case where this maximum was observed. It was observed indirectly by observation by uh, a reflection signal from the moon. Uh, 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 the main, uh, the main uh, uh, detector is on the American uh, satellite wind, but at that time the second uh, detector was a an, an Russian uh, satellite Coronas, and this Coronas detected the signal which was uh, exactly in the uh, uh, in uh, uh, in time of this giant burst. And when uh, an analysis showed that it detected the, the signal reflected from the moon because it was in the shadow of the Earth when, uh, uh, when it, it happened. So this is reproduced uh, absolute uh, light curve of this uh, burst and uh, it shows that uh, permit to, to uh, estimate the absolute uh, luminosity. Uh, so, uh, this is the paper of Duncan Thompson where we, they have considered the magnetar model. Uh, uh, here I want to show that uh, this interpretation of, of prompt P dot is, is not good because uh, these uh, uh, objects has very variable, very variable uh, light curve before the burst and after the burst, you see a change of the, so how, how to measure the change of uh, derivative of the period is, is, is a very big error. Um, and it's jump in, in P dot, which is never observed in, in uh, radio pulse, such a big jump. Uh, also, uh, it was claimed it was uh, observed uh, uh, cyclotron line, and if it belongs to proton, it, it has very high magnetic field, but maybe it belongs to electron, then, then it's quite normal magnetic field. Uh, so, uh, uh, what, what is most important from point of view of interpretation is that if you have very high magnetic field and strong, and strong uh, 
magnetic wind, then it can uh, produce uh, angular momentum losses much higher than the uh, dipole losses. So the alternative model of the um, uh, activity of gamma ray bursts of soft repeater uh, is connected with the properties of neutron stars. The neutron star had outer core, and in this outer core, the composition is non uh, non uh, Equilibrium, because formation of the neutron star by contraction going through hot phase or by accretion when there is cold shows that uh, uh, matter never reached its, its uh, ground state. And if the matter, uh, it, and this connected with very high density because Fermi energy, uh, Fermi energy prevent uh, beta decay and prevent uh, going to the uh, ground state. But if the matter, by some quake, goes out, then it could be a chain reaction and strong explosion. Not thermonuclear, but nuclear explosion. Uh, so we have estimated uh, many years ago, it was uh, at the uh, middle of 70s, we have estimated for the, um, that the energy uh, inside this uh, inside this uh, layer could be 10 to 48 ergs, what is enough for several bursts at that time. And here, uh, this was connected with gamma ray burst. And uh, now I want to show you the, uh, uh, what is, uh, seems to me, a very uh, pr promising uh, idea. A uh, promising idea is that uh, if you decrease the mass of the neutron star, then the this thickness of this non-equilibrium layer is increased. So for, for example, for 0.5 solar masses, you, it increased about 10 times. This is bottom of the non-equilibrium layer, it's upper bottom. So 10 times more uh, mass is in this uh, non-equilibrium layer. So if there is something happens, then the radius is also <coughs> increasing for low mass neutron star. And uh, that means that uh, this neutron star should rotate with lower velocity. They are limiting velocity, in limiting angular velocity is decreasing. And also it has a much higher uh, uh, supply of energy. How are you reducing the mass of the neutron star? Sorry? How are you reducing the mass of the neutron star? This is another question. I don't speak about it. I say if it has low mass, then it happens. But how uh, you reduce, it, we, uh, it cannot be reduced. It, it can be only be formed in this way. Because if, if, if it loses all, all the, eject all the matter, then uh, nobody knows how, how it happens. Close binary system. No, closed binary system is increasing. Therefore, uh, as I told you, in 0.45 mass of non equilibrium is seven times larger. So we have energy for 1,000 giant bursts from soft repeaters. This is how it happens. Uh, the uh, uh, atomic bombs and go, c comes out. It's from my old presentation of 87. Uh, and here is explosion. Uh, explosion is also on part of uh, this uh, calculations uh, of shock waves going formed during this. It's also a also very old idea. Uh, therefore, uh, the conclusions. So the gamma ray bursts are cosmological objects of unknown nature. So maybe it's bulk hole plus heavy magnetized disk. The key information may be coded in the prompt optical afterglow. If you, if you measure polarization and spectra of prompt emission, you can find much more than we now find from thousands of uh, spectra of uh, these late afterglows. So the soft repeaters are highly active and slowly rotating neutron stars. A normal equilibrium layer is formed in the neutron star crust during neutron star cooling or during accretion it, into it. And it may be important for glitches, explosions connected with soft repeaters. The mass and energy store increase rapidly with decreasing neutron mass. And uh, the activity of soft repeaters can be connected with this activity of non-equilibrium layer in neutron stars of lower mass. As I know, the, uh, observationally, the lowest neutron star mass is less than one solar mass. Observation.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much.